All right, Mr. Cash Twenty Two here. Like, comment, subscribe down below, and let's get this party started. As the title indicates, today we're going to be learning PowerShell One Hundred and One for Beginners. I'm excited to just teach everyone watching this. There's going to be lots of parts to this. Part one, two, 10, 12, 20, you name it. Um, we're, we're going to get through this um, one by one. It's going to take a while, but I'm excited just to see the growth and the progress throughout all this. I would love to make like a 10 hour video, um, you know, from beginning to end. But I don't know, for, for me personally, I feel like that's a little too overwhelming, but to each their own. Uh, so let's let's get this going. First things first, this first command that we're going to knock right off the bat is called the who am I command. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to close this. Uh, we're going to open this search box right here uh, on your Windows. And I currently have a Windows 10. So what we're going to do and hit off the bat is just type in PowerShell just right here and it should prompt up automatically um, if you do not have it obviously download it on your PC um, the weird thing is like I said if you have a Windows Windows 10 to 99.999% um, of the chance it, it should be there uh, no question about it so uh, let's get this party started and obviously I'll make other videos about downloading it and all that other jazz but this is just for individuals that currently have PowerShell installed on their PC so we're going to type in who am I <clears throat> and I'll make this a lot bigger right here. Let's see if I can expand that. And right here, as you can tell, it's showing the name of this desktop that I'm currently on right now. The name of this PC that I'm using. Um, you can also use another command that I like is host name. <clears throat> and it also still kind of tells you the name of the PC that you are currently using. For some reason, I've had this um, laptop for, man, about six years maybe even longer I've lost track but I haven't even changed the PC's name yet <laughs> of this so yeah I'm slacking but it's it's perfectly content if an individual is trying to figure out how to change this um, all you would have to do is just go to let's see PC name right here on this tool search box right here and it says view your PC name open this <clears throat> on the setting and right here is how you can change the device name right here i got that wakanda forever and all and it tells you the processors the device id and all that jazz okay all right so now that we have that knocked out of the bat uh, on our next slide what we're going to do is determine the powershell version so since i've already written this and i'll put these commands down in the description down below but it's best that you type it out rather than copy paste it just so you can kind of get the feel of it um, this is going to tell us the type of version of PowerShell that we currently have. Um, so I'll be copying and pasting this, opening up this terminal, and right here. So it looks like this PowerShell, so when it says PS, it means PowerShell. The version that we currently have is 5.1. Um, from my understanding, this is probably like the newest one. Um, did my due diligence and checked, so it looks like I'm up to par. Um, some individuals might have some older versions. Um, that's okay for this time being. Though I'll probably indicate when it's best to update it. But if if you want my personal opinion, um, updating these type of versions of PowerShell is probably due to your best interest uh, for security reasons. Um, you know all the debugging that they do. It's it's personally best if you want my honest opinion. So if you could get it updated to the newest version, um, you go on their website, Windows, and give it a shot. And like I said, I'll make all those other videos another time, but this is us just hitting the ground and we're running. All right, so now that we got that version down and we, we know we're pretty much up to par, um, on our next slide, another command that I want you guys to also know is also the get host. And the, we got two commands to determine the, the type of version of PowerShell that we're currently on. And this, this version of PowerShell, and within this command, it stores information about the shell, obviously. So I'm gonna copy and paste that command as well. I would love to type it in, but like I said, um, just to save time purpose. 
Oops, let me copy that, paste that. Version, and right here. So you got one or two options. You can either write this PS version table, or this get host, select the object version as well. So, um, and all this, all these fancy stuff, don't worry. I'll talk about that later on. I'm not trying to overwhelm you guys too much. Um, even this right here, all these unique symbols, like I said, this is just day one, just a nice introduction, um, just to kind of get you the feel of it, of how to, you know, use these certain commands, commandlets as well. And like I said, over time, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. But for now, this is just so you can kind of get used to playing with this um, this terminal. All right, so next thing is next. Um, we're going to hit it off the bat as well. We're going to run PowerShell with admin privilege. So <laughs> there's one or two ways we can run PowerShell with these admin privilege. So first way is obviously this command that I have right here. Um, it's called a start process PowerShell dash verbs run as. So I'll copy this <clears throat> and I'll paste it right here. And it's going to prompt up something like this. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And it says, you know, show the details and we'll click on yes, because we do want to run this as an ad admin version. So administrator, um, if you felt like, hey, is there a quicker way for me to run this admin prompt without having to type a command? And yes, there is another quicker way. Um, all you would have to do is hover down your mouse to this icon, right click it wants to be friendly and then click run as admin so you click that as well and this this should also prompt up too. you know do you want to allow this app to make the changes to your device and you click on yes okay so now that we have this admin um, terminal open we'll be using this for the time being uh, due to the other commands that you know I would like to show you as well <clears throat> so that's that's just you know to keep in the back of your head, you can either run the command that I have listed right here to start process PowerShell dash verb run as, or like I said, you can just right click in and click run as admin. So I love trying to teach you guys, you know, more than just one way. So also now when it's time to make executions with the PowerShell script, uh, you got to also keep in mind that um, anytime you make any command lines execution and scripting it opens doors for potential hackers so i'm an informational security engineer um, i love this stuff i'll you know go more in depth with all you know the cool hacking and pen pen tests and all that fun stuff but for now just keep in the back of your head that um the internet is a very scary place so anything that you do make sure you are very cautious you know that and i'll leave it up to you because you know Everyone has a mind of their own. All right, so next thing is next. Uh, just to keep in mind, all sign basically allows any execution of script signed by a trusted certificate authority, CA, to execute. So just keep in mind, these are the certain type of policies. <clears throat> then we also have the restrictor policy, blocks uh, the script execution by default, unrestricted, runs without um, restrictions, and then remote sign, we have um, it basically executes any script signed by a trusted CA. So in order for us to get this command going to remote to remote sign on within this PC, um, we'll just I'll just copy and paste this. And like I said, everything will be down in the description down below. And before I do that, oh, actually, it's best if I show that. So look, it says. Windows PowerShell. So let's say hypothetically I try to run this command on here and I hit enter. It says execution policies. Something like this should prompt up. And what you would do is click on Y. And you'll probably get something that looks like this. PowerShell is denied. Da 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 da. Run as admin. Okay. So like I previously said, um, there's going to be some certain type of commands that won't execute unless you are an admin. Okay, so obviously this did not run. 
And the reason why is because, like I said, we're not on. You have to make sure you're looking at this title. This is admin. And previously, we were just on the regular PowerShell as a guest, okay? So you want to make sure you're admin when you want to run certain type of executions. So let's give this another shot. And I'll make this bigger for you guys. Click on yes. And it goes through. Okay, so now that it went through, we're on the go. And remember, that was us um, basically executing a remote sign in. So now let's say um, you forgot the execution policy um, that you're currently on right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. And the reason why I say that is because remember, there was four listed. There is this all signed. <clears throat> There's this restricted right here, and then the unrestricted and the remote signed. Okay, so I'm about to jump back there and hit this command and hit enter. And looks like we're currently on the remote side. Okay, so if I go back to this, it basically means execute any creative script signed by a trusted CA. And remember, CA means certified certificate, excuse me, certificate authority. Okay, so it's trusted. Okay, so now that, oops, sorry about that. Now that we got that situated, <clears throat> hop back into this PowerPoint, and um, now we're gonna enable PowerShell remoting. So for us to enable this, um, this is the command that we'll be using. Enable PS from PowerShell. PS means PowerShell remoting. I'm about to copy that as well. Jump back here to this admin terminal. Paste it right there and then click enter. Um, this one might take a while. Let's see. And there is something else that I also wanted to show you, um, depending on how long this one takes. Let's see, uh, it's still thinking. Um, some, some individuals might run into problems. <clears throat> Let's see, let me make this bigger. That looks like this, this type of error. So, you know, PowerShell remote command error. If you ever get an error that looks like this on your end, um, make sure this code right here, you just highlight this. So from this two to three, copy, paste it into Google. And um, that type of code should definitely tell you what's wrong. And, you know, to kind of debug the issues. Uh, so this one, I actually want to clear this one real quick because we don't need that. So we don't get confused. All right. So... Even though I previously already kind of enabled PS remoting, uh, some individuals, like I said, might have that air prompt up. So what you would have to do is, um, in order to pass through this, you would have to use this command. Um, so this is just passing through the expectations of the security and updating the trusted host list. So you would have to copy and paste this command right here, this enable PS remoting skip network profile check. Um, jump back onto here, copy and paste it. Um, and then it should spit out some information and then you click on yes. Like I said, I already um, ran this, so it's not gonna show up on my end. You will click on, so you type in, click on the Y key and then click yes. And then from there, you would also have to set this other command as well in order to bypass this. So we'll copy and paste that. So you put paste this as well copy and paste it, hit enter, and this is something that should pop up as well. So it's a trusted host, the WinRM client, and you also have to click on yes, and you should be good. Now your PowerShell um, remote is finally enabled within the system. Okay, so now, now we're gonna kinda get into the terminologies, certain type of jargons that's used. You're gonna see something that's spelled CMDLE, TS. This is pronounced as commandlets. Okay, so then you have some that are like CD. For example, this basically means change working directory. Um, so that's exactly what we're about to do. Um, I will close this one right here. Oops. Let me close this. Um, so CD just means change working directory. So we'll type that in CD. And also we on top of the CD, we also have CD dot dot, and it's to move up one directory as well. So CD dot dot, and as you can tell, look at 
it's moving up one directory let's do that again and then let's see if we can do it one more time okay so then that shows you right here as you can tell from the beginning um, the CD is just to change directory it looks like um, I should have kept the other tab open but I have nothing nothing too hot going on on my end on this PC um, since like I said I, I only kind of use it just for school purposes honestly but then on top of that you can also you know change the directory or move up one directory as well so keep that in the back of your head and then you can spell clear just to kind of clear this all out okay um, so that's one commandlet then we also have the ls uh, this list files uh, you know currently in your directory so we'll, we'll give that a shot as well so to just type in ls and this is what's currently being spit out on this pc right now um, this mode we'll talk about later on like i said throughout throughout this whole pro progress um, about ownership read writes all that jazz okay <clears throat> and then next thing is next um, we also have more commands that we can keep in the back of our head like get child item so this gets items in one or more specific location and this is the command that we're going to be using right here so i'm going to copy and paste this as well open this spit this out and as you can see oops i think i went a little too much down and as you can see this is what's currently in the child items list right here so we got you know quite a few information as you can see when we spit in ls um, these are the type of length of the names we have like autodesk within the system intel program files sql and all that other jazz um like i said don't overwhelm yourself too much this is just to kind of get a feel of how to you know run commands on this terminal um, just we're just playing around and then we'll obviously go a lot more in depth just to get a better understanding as well <clears throat> All right, and for now um, Looks like we hit it pretty much in the park. Uh, it's a home run I'm looking forward to see growth and progress throughout this journey. Like I said, this is just we're just scratching the surface um, We're gonna get definitely more in depth uh, writing some scripts and all that cool fun stuff and I'm exploring PowerShell a lot more. Um, so please like, comment, subscribe down below. Hopefully you guys learned a whole lot. I'm excited to see you guys grow and I'm looking forward to teaching you guys more. Take care, stay blessed, and stay hungry.